Hello, everyone, and um, thank you for joining us today. It is our pleasure to have Dr. Rashmi Sani here with us. Before we begin, I'd like to share a few things with our audience. Um, we will begin with a short introduction to Dr. Sani and her work before first handing it over to her. You may share your questions and responses in the chat box uh, throughout the lecture. And um, in fact, we encourage you to do that um, as and when whatever responses you may have. And we'll collect those after the lecture and I will moderate the questions and uh, allow Dr. Sonny to respond to them. Um, all right, I think let me just begin. Uh, Dr. Rashmi Sani is an academic, writer, and associate professor of cultural studies at Christ University, Bangalore. Along with Lucia Imar Singh, she is the co-founder of Vision Mix, an international network of artists, filmmakers, scholars, and curators uh, working in the field of lens-based media, which fosters collaborations and generates wider debates around the field. She has previously edited special journal volumes on South Asian science fiction and fantasy, moving image and its trajectories in South Asia, and histories of labor and gender, with specific reference to women at work in film and media histories. Dr. Sani has also curated several exhibitions around documentary, cinema, video, and moving image works, including Loss and Transience, at the Honga Museum in Taipei in 2021, Set.Reset at Saligao, Goa in 2018, as well as Video Vortex 11 and Future Orbits as collaterals for the Gucci Museum's Biennial in 2017. Dr. Sony's talk today will explore the relationship between artist and citizen as concepts grounded in language and history, drawing upon a section of the same name from her book, The Vanishing Point. Moving Images After Video, published by Tulika Books in 2022. The volume addresses India's contemporary history um, as a part of the India Since the 1990s series, tracking the fugitive afterlife of video and digital moving images as archives of public memory, works of art, degraded repositories of cinema, surveillance tools, and instruments of government. Dr. Sani will revisit the conceptual proposition of the artist as citizen and what it means and may mean in our contemporary times. Thank you so much for being here with us today, ma'am, and over to yourself. Thank you, Arundhati, for that uh, very kind introduction and also thanks to Art South Asia and to Rab Alana for the invitation to deliver this lecture and to Arundhati and Aditya for uh, you know, all the work they've done towards organizing this online event, which I know is not very easy. Uh, I feel very honored to be able to share my thoughts with and uh, hopefully along with uh, some very accomplished thinkers and practitioners who have joined online. And I'm really delighted uh, to so see so many uh, friends here. I would like to acknowledge Indu Chandrasekhar and her team at Tulika Books who have produced this volume, The Vanishing Point, Moving Images After Video, and I must add, have produced it so beautifully. Uh, it's quite a special volume because uh, uh, since it's a book on moving images, we've kind of uh, made an extra effort to ensure that you know the creators of the image are credited equally with people who have authors who have contributed long texts and uh, I have uh, tried to uh, make this effort of looking at images themselves as conveying certain very strong and uh, you know moving ideas so uh, no images have been used in an illustrative sense in the book you know the images are a very integral part of this volume and a very important part of them and uh, the book actually uh, includes contributions from 53 uh, artists, filmmakers, and authors, and no image has been used in an illustrative manner. So every image is actually doing its own work, uh, sometimes complementary to the text and sometimes challenging the text. And I hope to be able to talk a little bit about this later, perhaps during the discussion. So this is volume three of the India Since the 1990s series, uh, which has been conceptualized by Ashish Rajadaksha, who is the series editor. Uh, and it it's a particular pleasure to be talking about this book on the Art South Asia platform because uh, Rahab Alana, who's the editor of the forthcoming volume, that's volume four on photography, 
uh, is also part of the series. So um, I, I, it's been a year of great loss in the world of arts and ideas. Um, first, we lost Vivan Sundaram and then Virchan Dharamsi Bhai, who some of you may know as a remarkable uh, film historian from Bombay. Uh, then subaltern historian Partho Chatterjee, followed by the tragic death of cinematographer Navroz Contractor in an awful road accident near Bangalore. And just a few days ago, the untimely loss of art historian Kavita Singh, who was also an ex-colleague of mine at the School of Arts and Aesthetics in JNU, and who was in fact to edit the final volume on museums in the India since the 1990s series. So in times that have generally been challenging, I think on a daily basis, with violence being leveraged to destroy the fabric of Indian society in Manipur, in Haryana, it almost seems to have become a moral responsibility to choose and define our role as practitioners, as writers and as educators with even greater care. All right, so, so, so I'm gonna focus on the idea of the artist as citizen, which is the title of section two in The Vanishing Point. Uh, and this striking image from Anamika Haksar's film, Ghode Ko Jalebi Khilane Le Ja Raya Hoon, uh, taking the horse to eat jalebis is the lead opening image for this section and in this image we see the actor Gopalan unfurl a gigantic red flag while thousands of workers stand on the ground singing the Hindi version of the international the com communist and socialist anthem adopted by countries across the world and uh, those who've seen the film uh, will know that it's a remarkable achievement for reasons that are aesthetic uh, ethical and political and I will uh, return to this uh, later in my talk so the term artist as citizen is used by Geeta Kapoor in an essay uh, titled The Cultural Conjuncture, Art into Documentary. And an abridged version of this is uh, included in The Vanishing Point. And uh, Kapoor's essay was written uh, in 2004 following the general elections that brought the United Progressive Alliance or the UPA government into power, representing a new and uh, promising alliance of parties across caste and regional lines. And of course, 20 years later, we know that the story has played out very differently. So in this essay, Kapoor uh, refers to the antimony between art and culture, where art tends towards, or perhaps may tend towards individualism, and culture is premised on a sense of collectivity uh, and asks provocatively, that is Kapoor asks provocatively, uh, is culture what artists make? And I think this is a question that merits careful consideration. And I take this as my point of departure in outlining the ideas that I present before you as an invitation to think collectively about the relationship between the idea of the artist and that of the citizen. So the title artist as citizen indicates a metonymic relationship of a performative nature. Uh, and I suggest that both terms artist and citizen are rooted in a performative subjectivity. So what are the unique characteristics of this performance through which artists enact citizenship? Uh, in order to answer this question, one needs to examine both terms as conceptual categories uh, independently. So in a, in a remarkable book called Keywords, the British intellectual literary critic, novelist and sociologist, and one might retrospectively add media theorist, uh, Raymond Williams traces the evolution of about 100 words from the English language as conceptual categories that undergo transformation over time. His inquiry emerges from his experience of feeling alienated in 1950s England after serving in the Second World War and returning to find that the popular meaning of certain words like culture had undergone a noticeable shift in servitude to the project of English or British nationalism. And one of these hundred keywords that he examines is the word art. Now, art has been used in English from the 13th, in the English language, that is from the 13th century, and was widely applied until the 17th century in matters as varied as mathematics, medicine, and angling. Now, in the medieval university curriculum, the arts, that is the seven arts or the liberal arts, were grammar, logic, rhetoric, arithmetic, geometry, music, and astronomy. Uh, the now dominant use of art and artists to refer to the capacity for creativity and imagination was not fully established until the 19th century or the 18th and the 19th centuries 
when a distinction between artist and artisan was mobilized. Now, in the context of colonization, we know how sharply these distinctions played out in the colonies through the intense deliberations on education in general and art education in particular. Now, Raymond Williams suggests that this complex set of historical distinctions between various kinds of human skill and between varying purposes in the use of such skills were related to the practical changes in the practical division of labor and to fundamental transformations in the definition of the purpose of the exercise of skill. And he goes on to suggest that these were primarily related to the changes inherent in the capitalist commodity production with its specialization and reduction of use values to exchange values. So there was a consequent defensive specialization of certain skills and purposes to the arts of the humanities where forms of general use and intention which were not determined by immediate exchange could be at least conceptually abstracted. That is the question of the nature of work and the purpose and value attached to it was central in devising a particular imagination and idea of the arts and the artist. So though artists have existed for thousands of years, our understanding of the artist as a modern subjective category gets consolidated during industrialization and in response to it through questions of labor, material, craft, method, and value percolating into a certain disposition towards the self and the world. Now, uh, along with Raymond Williams' sort of kind of, you know, linguistic inquiry into the etymology of the term art um, and in a related way, artist, uh, there is this other wonderful book called A Brief History of the Artist from God to Picasso, which was written in 1941 by Paul Berolsky, uh, who covers a broader historical span by drawing our attention to the historiography of art history, which itself emerged as a discipline only in the 19th century. So in the last sweep of time, he says, the emergence of the artist is a very recent phenomenon. Although human beings have been making works of art, painting, sculpture, and architecture for approximately 30,000 years, it was less than 3,000 years ago that they began to be identified as individuals who matter to society. Even in ancient Rome and in the Middle Ages, artists were usually not identified or known to a wide public. So the modern cult of the artist first begins to flower, according to uh, his analysis, in the work of the 14th century Italian poet, writer, and philosopher Dante, and the 16th century Italian Renaissance artist and architect, Giorgio Vasari. And uh, he says it comes into full bloom in the period of romantic romanticism. And there are multiple and varied accounts of you know, the history of the category and concept of the artist. And this is one and rather enjoyable uh, you know, and a very insightful account of this history. So to understand Vasari's celebration of the artist as hero, uh, he explores further the history of the idea of the epic poet as it develops over time through Homer, Virgil, Ovid, and Dante, all of them crucial in their poetic self-consciousness to the modern idea of the artist, which is rooted in the idea of the epic poet, he argues. The powerful persona of the modern artist is later cemented by writers, as we observe writers like Balzac in uh, this wonderful uh, story, The Unknown uh, Masterpiece, through the tragic story of the painter Fernhofer and his heroic failure, or by James Joyce in the portrait of the artist as a young man. So today, as we enter the era of NFTs and auto-generative artificial intelligence, uh, questions of creativity, labor, imagination, and value are once again at stake in rearticulating what this means for art and artists as conceptual categories that emerged in response to wider social context in the modern world in a historically situated way. So I turn now to the book, The Vanishing Point, uh, before moving on to reflect upon the term citizen and to suggest that the artist citizen or the artist as citizen performs by inserting themselves into a wider structural and historical systems of belonging and unbelonging, of enfranchisement and disenfranchisement, finding aesthetic forms to establish a connection between the self and the social world. 
So in an essay in my book by documentary filmmaker Paramita Vora, which is titled On Making Documentaries, she reflects upon her preference for unfixable characters in devising the narrator's subjectivity. And she does so by locating her work within the history of documentary practice, starting from the influence of John Grierson to post-colonial independent documentary in India, as well as documentaries produced by the films division in the 1960s by Pramod Pati, SNS Shastri, and N. Sukhdev. Uh, and her argument for her aesthetic choices of, construct, of constructing exaggerated, vulnerable, and playful characters as the narrators in her films is to dismantle documentary's own claim towards objectivity and certitude, and to enable a spectatorial relationship that isn't reliant on the authority of the filmmaker alone as an arbitrator of some kind of truth value. So she traces her own aesthetic lineage to uh, SNS Shastri, who made a number of films using the first person, uh, some including uh, And I Make Short Films or I Am 20, which featured uh, citizens who were born on 15th August 1947, who were 20 years old when the film was made in 1967. And since we are coming up to 15th August, it might be pertinent to watch a short clip from this film as the characters in the film will now be 76 years old and one wonders what they might have to say if a sequel to the film were Maybe I am talkative and very loquacious and I make my presence felt. Possibly I talk like a preacher or a politician. But then I am entitled to my opinions and as the Lord said unto Moses, I am who I am. I don't know, I have many ambitions but uh, only two need concern us here. One thing I would like to do very much is to go through this country, and talk to bottom line, take a little bit of money and a pad and paper, a tape recorder and a camera, and I'd like to go to this through this country, walking at a very leisurely pace, seeing all kinds of people of different races and different cultures, and capture them in their different moods, their songs and their dances, and, and the cacophony of their multifarious tongues. I like to get the, uh, their agony, their anguish and the anger the fertile soil, the parched earth, everything, so that one day when I could come back, I could open the book and remind myself of what I'm part of and what is part of me. I should have known you better with a girl like you, then I would love everything that I do, and I do, hey, 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 and I do. Fifteenth August, 1947. Well, it means a lot. First of all, it's my birthday, of course, and it's one of the greatest day for India. film and very poignant in the way in which, uh, you know, we think back about aspirations that young people had uh, who were 20, uh, after 20 years of independence and um, to sort of reflect back on where we are today as a nation. So we just uh, stop the video um, and I'll move on. So uh, this is, you know, uh, Paramita Bora discusses uh, SNS Shastri's work in her own essay while kind of you know tracing her aesthetic lineage back to some of this work and uh, talking about her own filmmaking and the politics in her own filmmaking uh, through the aesthetic and through the form which is very political and uh, as I said earlier we don't uh, you know I've not used any images in an illustrative manner uh, in the book so the images that actually accompany Paramita's essay are uh, a work by another artist called Afra Shafiq who's a multimedia artist and uh, she uh, did some research uh, at the Center for Studies in Social Sciences in Calcutta at the Gen Gender Studies Archive, uh, exploring debates around uh, women's education during colonial times and during the nationalist uh, movement. Um, and uh, I'd like to request you to share the uh, website um, of Afra's work and 
this work is called enter sultana's reality so aditya or um, yeah if one of you can share this yeah so it's called enter sultana's reality and the work is really and you can enter and just kind of browse through the website as i speak uh the work emerged when she was doing a research in this archive and she came across photographs of women uh with books in very interesting ways so a number of very interesting Im images of women in some kind of relationship with books either reading them or looking at them and so on and she got uh into into researching the question of uh, women's education and nationalist history uh, and colonial history and the question of uh, you know how much were women to be educated what were they to be educated in and so on and so she's uh, devised or designed this really in, uh, interesting and uh, very uh, you know attractive uh, multimedia website through which one can navigate these questions in the form of chapters so in the form of a book actually as uh, chapters that take us through the narrative <laughs> I mean, as you would have guessed, the title for her work, "Enter Sultana's Reality," is based on Rokia Shakavat Hossein's 1905 uh, English uh, short story, which was called "Sultana's Reality," and she kind of takes a does a playful take on this, uh, and she reinserts herself into the longer history of women's struggles through her research and also through these aesthetic choices. So, the other artists featured in this section uh, include. Um, the media storm collective uh, deepa dhanraj who was part of the yugandar film collective uh, shiba chachi who i'm delighted has joined us today uh, and nalini malani along with artwork by sharmila samant and pushpa mala and of course the uh, image from anamika haksar's uh, film which you saw and some years ago i did a public conversation with uh, anamika during the urban lens film festival and a recording of that is available on youtube for those who might be interested Uh, and for those who have not yet seen the film, which is now available in India and in the UK, I understand, uh, on this platform, OTT platform called Good Show. Uh, let me just give a brief context to the film. Uh, it's based in Shahjanabad in Old Delhi, in an area populated with migrant laborers and daily wage earners. Uh, and Anamika had been conducting uh, acupuncture workshops in the area for several years, and through Lokesh Jain, who plays a character. of a tourist guide in the film and some local uh, ngos uh, who she'd been um, you know liaising with and interacting with residents in that neighborhood for over 7 years so the script for the film emerged through this kind of durational engagement and the interviews conducted with rag pickers and manual laborers and pickpockets and others who engage in unorganized work in the informal uh, labor economy so the film uh, uses theater actors so gopalan and raghubir yadav and ravindra patra who are well known theater and uh, film actors even to enact scenes uh, which are scripted from the interviews that were uh, you know uh, that were uh, conducted while doing this preliminary research and um, these are used along with documentary footage and dreams become the pivotal motive that string the film together uh, through which a range of image valencies are brought in uh ranging from painting to animation and special effects uh and you know one of the points of discussion uh around the film has been about you know how does one actually do justice to so many different kinds of image types and i think they they've been used in very interesting ways so if we can get the audio and the video to play properly um uh, i think it might be helpful to watch the trailer of the film for people who have not actually seen it to get a sense of the kind of aesthetic treatment that uh, it offers khushamdeed 
خواتین و حضرات شاہ جان آباد کی ان تلسمی گلیوں میں آپ سبھی مہمان خصوصی کا ہوارا گرد آکاش جین جنون کی اور سے سلام قبول ہو سلام سلام آج پھر آگے ہمرے سپنے میں رنگی لگانے ہم مڑنگی لگا رہے گئے کی تم لگا رہے گئے ہم بجاز میں کام کرتے تھے اسی بھی مر گئے اب بہت ڈر لگتا ہے مندی دیکھتا ہے لاسے دیکھتے ہیں جا رہے ہیں اوزے ہیں جناب لوگ کہتے ہیں کہ دلی ان کی جیب میں رہتی ہے पर यहाँ तो हजारों जेबें तलाश करते हैं दिल्ली तो कहीं नहीं मिली। नमाजें निकल रहे हैं, मैं उनकी जेब काट रहा हूँ। इतने में बारिश आ गई, मैंने जेब काटना बंद करके भीग मांगना शुरू कर दिया। चोरी थी साले, हम चोरी करते कमीने। भाई ये मेरे दिमाग में एक आइडिया आ रहा है, क्यों ना आकाश जैन की तरह हम This is Seva Kumir Van. We are packing the all salads and beggars and throwing in jungle of Bawana. Come on, sir. Come on. Don't you have any folk stories or folk songs? There's a school of young girls and they're giving them a lot of food. I'm not a kid. I'm not a kid. I'm not a kid. I took my job from my job. To sit and sit and sit, to see the people of God, to make yourself a good person, तमाशा देखने वालों देखो निगाहों ना से दिल्ली के नजारे तहजीब की जन्नत है जमना के किनारे खुद ना बन जाना तमाशा देखने वालों So, uh, you know, just um, to connect um, the, the, what we saw there with this question of representation and I think the ethics of representation, one of the key uh, challenges that the uh, crew and the cast of the film faced was how to represent abject poverty in an ethical manner, in an empathetic manner, in a, in a manner which uh, actually, uh, you know, doesn't demean people or uh, recognizes the great strength and the courage and the humor that uh, people have uh, despite you know have, living extremely difficult lives um, and this really comes through very beautifully um, in the film mm -hmm. and um, I want to kind of point out that the, this word representation is a term that is shared across the domain of aesthetics as well as the domain of politics uh, and it connects to the concluding part of my talk which is on the concept of the citizen uh, and the idea of democracy or representative democracy which is the form of governance that we at least in uh, India have uh, chosen and uh, in, in many ha has been chosen in many parts of the world. So I need to condense a very large and influential body of work uh, in the interest of time uh, that has been produced by political theorists and philosophers ranging from Louis Althusser, uh, Hannah Arendt to Sunil Kilnani, uh, addressing the question of citizenship and civil society. From uh, Plato's Republic to the development of modern uh, democracy, the citizen has occupied a central role as arbitrator of rights and responsibilities through a range of governance systems of which democracy is but one. However, I'm told that India is a democracy and also because this seems to be an influential form of governance in many parts of the modern world, uh, I will restrict the, uh, my discussion to 
this form. So the separation between civil society and state and the putting in place of institutions and mechanisms to keep the absolute power of the state in check are considered as essential features for a healthy democracy. Uh, today, we see democracy being attacked and diminished on a daily basis in India, most recently with the uh, election commission bill tabled in parliament, which replaces the chief justice of India by a cabinet minister on the committee to appoint the election chief election commissioner. Uh, and there is, of course, a larger question of subjectivity. That is, a citizen is a subject of a nation state in as much as subjectivity implies agency and free will in a Hegelian sense, it also means that citizens must become subjects of something, the state, in order to be granted their agency. So uh, Etienne Balibur uh, identifies this condition as an aporia within the idea of citizenship within democracies. And he uses the term citizen subject to allude to this peculiar kind of subjecthood. Um, herein lies the contradiction in the idea of the artist as the citizen, which indicates a conflictual relationship between the idea of creative freedom and the freedom for an imagination unhindered by social norms or popular ideology. Uh, the right to autonomous existence in the world of ideas, imagination and representation as we might term it. But we know that this is rarely the case and that now more so than ever the state in India, as in other parts of the world that are witnessing a shift towards totalitarianism uh, is creating division amongst artists and creative practitioners on ideological grounds. And uh, it is therefore worth reminding those of us who are concerned with the arts and creative practices that the category of the artists comes with a history. It comes with immense responsibilities towards the social world uh, and to recognize that the time to act is um, here and now. So I'm going to conclude with this and hopefully we can open up to a, you know, a lively discussion because I'm sure the practitioners here have things, more interesting things to say. Thank you.